Hi, this is Emily from Power. Today I'll guide you through some best practice tips for designing your Power pop up In the Power Editor, you can get started with templates. Start by thinking about which visual design best meets your needs. How do you want to grab your visitors' attention? Everything here is still fully customizable, so these are great starting points but don't need to be your final design. In the content section, you can select the layout of your images. You can have no background, a full background. If you select the full background, please note you can add an image overlay and adjust the transparency there to make your pop-up more readable. For now, we'll go back to using the left image layout. Then you have your elements. These make up the content of your pop-up and it's where you can describe your offer or customise your announcement, for example. You can edit the text by highlighting it and changing the colour or font, or size. Then you also have a form element here. Please note that to design your form, you should go to the Design tab and select Form Style Options. Back in the Content tab, we also have a button element here. You can select what action is performed when the button is clicked. In this case, it closes the pop-up. It can also be used to link to another section of your website. You can also add many other elements to your pop-up, including a coupon or even other power apps. Please note that although these are in your pop-up, they are separate apps and need to be edited individually. The design styles you apply to your pop-up won't automatically apply to the power app you add here. We'll delete this one out for now. Then you have your success screen. This section is automatically created when a form element is added to your pop-up. It's fully customizable with the image layout or elements you'd like to add to it. It's a great place to redirect your leads to a portion of your website for frequently asked questions, for example, or you could display a coupon code once your visitor has given you their contact information. That's what we'll do here. You completely customize the text and the coupon code and it can be copied on click. Now we have that all configured, it's also worth noting you have some different after submission options. The first is you can completely close the pop-up after somebody gives you their email address. Then you could follow up using an autoresponder email for example. Your other option is to redirect them to another page after they give you their email address or complete the form on your pop-up. Then, in the Design tab, this is where you can customise the look of your pop-up and where it's positioned on the page. You can either have it as a box, or have it appear in the corner, or even take over the whole screen as a full-screen pop-up. You can also add entrance animations to really catch the eye of your visitors. You can also edit the background and border colours of your pop-up. We'll keep these as they are for now. We talked about form style options and then you can also customise the close button in your pop-up. You can choose how the user closes your pop-up and its style and if you'd like, if you're using your pop-up for age verification purposes for example, you can disable the close icon and close when visitor clicks away, which forces a visitor to interact with the content of your pop-up. A nice way of spotlighting your app is using the website page overlay and using a gradient. This really helps to focus the eye on your pop-up. There are different options here, but with a box layout, we recommend using the radial gradient. Then, in the final tab here, this is where you can think about how you want to display your pop-up. If you have a fixed time period where you'd like to display your pop-up, you can set the display schedule. Then you can also decide how often you want a visitor to see your pop-up. There are different triggers also, either show it immediately or a great option for reducing cart abandonment is showing your pop-up as visitors start to leave your site. You could also choose to show it after a fixed delay, so you can choose how many seconds here, or you can display it after your visitors have scrolled a certain percentage of your web page. You can also set custom triggers, but this requires a little bit more technical knowledge. Another option for displaying your pop-up is displaying it as a floating tab or button. This means it's always hidden behind a tab that users can see on your site. Then you have the email options. 
You'll want to make sure that you insert your email so that you always get notified whenever there's a new response to your pop-up. You can also create a autoresponder email in the Power Email Editor. Then there are various integration options so that you can sync your contacts in one location, such as using MailChimp. Under the advanced settings, you can also change the form error messages. This is great if you're translating your pop-up, for example, or using a different language, or if you have unique or fun messaging you'd like to use. You can also pause your pop-up, and this is a quick way to disable your pop-up so that you can use it later if you're not using the display schedule. It means you don't need to uninstall it from your site. If you pause it, it will simply be hidden. And then, if you're more advanced, you can also use custom CSS. When you're ready, click Publish, and then select your platform. We recommend you install your pop-up on all pages so that no matter which page your visitor lands on, they will still see your pop-up. I hope this has given you some ideas and tips on how to be successful with Power Pop-up. Don't forget, Power has 60 apps for your website. Check them all out in your Power dashboard, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials.